I'm the Commissar, this is Forged Alliance Forever, and you are here for top tier tactics and superb strategy as these fellows face off on a generated map. Just before we start, I'd like to say that thank you for answering my survey, I will continue posting on Sundays, but I will try to drop a few extras on Wednesdays and Fridays when I have the time. So without further ado, let's go in and meet our players. So, we have Hot Team here on the right, Cold Team here on the left, and in the topmost position for Hot Team we have Yehonzas, 2196 rated, he is Seraphim and he's in orange. To his south, we have Joker. Joker is 1563 rated. He is Cybron and he's in Burgundy. And last but not least, down in the bottom here for a hot team, we have Sailor Moon, 1598 rated, and Eon in red. And across to the other side, on Cold Team, starting at the bottom here, we have Starchasm Nix, who is 1912 rated, and UEF playing in Mauve. Centrally, we have Saints Row, 1477 rated, and Seraphim, he is in dark blue. And last but not least, in the northern position for Cold Team, this is Nyamarine, who is 1853 rated, and Eon, and he's in light blue. And a quick look at the map. Little bits of reclaim scattered everywhere, most of it on these plateaus here and here by the looks of things. And mechs is just scattered everywhere, so map control will be key. This area here and its mirror can be accessed down there. But this area down here is a plateau and will have to be dropped or edge built. And we already saw in the chat that Star is planning to do just that. And I expect that that would be pretty tasty because as well as all that reclaim, those plateaus have six mixes each. Now, looks like our earliest aggression is coming out from Nya, who has sent a lab and scout combo, a flare and a spirit, heading forward directly towards his mirror Johansus, see what he's doing, maybe pick off an engineer or two if he's lucky. And he might well be lucky because this area up here is very prone to fast expansion with engineers and so there will probably be some unguarded fellows out in this area. That said, Johansus is being wise, he's guarding his expansion with at least one tank and probably more on the way and there's a scout, and his com is also heading out in this direction. Whereas, looks like Sailor's just being straight up greedy here, and sending an engineer forward unprotected, along with this one. Edge building down here, rather than walking all the way around here, and that will give him some early presence in this area. Have we got those drops that we were promised? Well, yes, we have. Star has got, looks like, two labs and three engies on this transport, and he's flying it out to this plateau, whereas Nya is being much more aggressive and is just dropping right here in Yohanza's expansion. Now, he might be in for a bit of an unpleasant surprise, as not only is Yohanza's coming out here with his com, but also there's a bomber on the way. And not to be outdone, Joker has also got an NG and lab drop coming out towards this plateau. And look at this very bold drop from Sailor, who is landing in Starchasm's expansion. So, on the left, we have to watch out for that bomber. We've still got some nice labs being dropped off here, which may do more damage. On the right, we'll check on the main drop in a second, but look at this beautiful attempt to contest, and he just goes and straight up reclaims the NGs. 
he reclaim and he'll reclaim the factory. Will it get anything out? Meanwhile, over here, these engines have been caught by the comm and forced to retreat. But Niall's fighter has shot down the bomber, and that will be nice. These engines are going to set up a base back here, while these labs are coming in and trying to shoot up a couple of mexes. And this has been reclaimed before it got anything off, and Sailor is going to set it up. Meanwhile, he is pumping out a decent number of these factories here, and we'll soon get some labs or tanks perhaps out. Tanks, in fact, he started with. These labs have been caught by a tank and scout combo from Johannes, but they did kill two mexes. So, nice opening. Meanwhile, we can see on the minimap that Joker's put his NGs down on the plateau, as you'd expect, but he's brought his labs forward and he's claimed an NG that was trying to set up a factory for Nyar here. He's going to claim a mex and he might get some more done, so that's a nice little drop. The transport's going to be picked up by those inties, and in come the labs. Are they going to claim any more? Another NG goes down. Labs come out and counter it, but they've done a couple of kills, which is pretty good. So, looking overall for a moment, we can see that Hot Team have both plateaus, and they have now this rather well-established base from Sailor that's got three factories producing tanks, and Star just hasn't got anything to stop them. He is charging in, and he is going to lose a bunch of mexes and ngs for free. This is a lot of eco he can't afford to lose. And while he sent some inties to try and stop any air presence here, there's already a bummer out here doing damage for Sailor. Quick check in the north to see what those engines from Nyar got up to. Well, they did build a couple of factories, but they've been taken out, and a large number of tankers are coming in. There's a bomber locking them down. I don't think those factories are going to survive. Gun upgrade on the way for Saints, and I don't think anybody else has got an upgrade yet, so that is early aggression from Saints. But let's just have a look at that 40 eco lead for Hot Team, which is thanks to that map control we were speaking about earlier. 40 eco lead when the lap lead is over just 110 is immense, and Hot team will hopefully for them be able to convert something into it. Saints doubles down on the aggression as he goes for Nano. We now have Stars Com pushing in to try and stop this spam coming out from these factories. And he's got a few tanks defending and more coming in. But look at all the eco he's lost. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mexes down to that push. Mex is that it would take him time and resources to get back while he has to keep on fighting all this stuff off. So that's pretty good. Now, there isn't really much to defend the middle from Saints, who is, thanks to this, well, I thought he was going to be getting assistance from Nyar, but Nyar is occupied elsewhere. This is a decent sized army from Saints, and with his Rambo Com, there's just nothing to stop it from Hot Team. So as Hot Team take the flanks, we could be seeing Cold Team going to take the middle. Let's see how that turns out. Star continuing to push Sailor back, but Sailor is setting up point defenses and Star's Com has taken a few hits and is unupgraded. So if he wants to be able to, rem to remedy this problem he's got here, he might want to get an upgrade on his comm. Nya with sensors and the range upgrade is quite nice, and for Rambo from Saints, who's getting the um, regen aura as well as gun and nano, so he and his army here with that power will be very hard to stop. 
Meanwhile, though, look at this. We have a huge drop from Joker coming in onto Nyar's landmass, and it looks like he's trying to match the fantastic success that his ally Sailor had against Star on the other side. A few labs are trying to deal with this, and maybe they will before too much goes down, but there's already a run by coming round the bottom here for Joker, and it's going to pick up at least one mech, and maybe more, depending on how on point Star proves to be. Speaking of Star, how's he doing here? Well, he has now got pillars coming in, and with the pillars, his comm should be able to clean this up. He had a ghetto gunship there, but it got shot down by anti-air tanks. However, meanwhile, the push has begun in mid. So on the left, we have Ilshis coming in from Saints to help deal with this, but Saints has to worry about his own T2 PD, PD, PGen, under fire. On the right, this raid is slipping in, and although Sailor, Joker, and Yohondas are surrounding it with their comms, they've got to come in and deal with it. And that could leave a big opening for Saints and Nya to push in with their comms. So Saints did lose his um, P-Gen, but he was able to clear up the tanks with this point defense. Here on the minimap, we have been watching Star using his pillars to drive away this base, and the Ilshis are going to clear this up, as is this point defense and a little bit of lab support from Nya. But, over here, these are going to die. They've taken out Amex, but it's this push we're going to have to look at. In come Saints and Nya. And with Nya's sensors showing them... Well, look at that. Look how much Nya's sensors can show the two comms as they push. And he's got the first range upgrade on his Eon gun and Saints with this immense Rambo com. In they come. This T3 P gen would be a nice kill if they can get it, but it's possible that they don't know that it's going up yet. And they really need to get something done. They're hitting T2 mixes, but look at that. Hot team are a hundred mass ahead, thanks to their map control and early raids. And if Cold Team can't do something about that, Cold Team, I mean, look at that. In total mass collected, they are 30,000 behind. That's wild. The comms and these two supporting Ilshis split up and get some damage done and the two comms are pushing in. There are point defences here though. And while Saints is probably in a position to survive those point defences, I don't know if Nyar is. Cause sure, he's got the range upgrade and he's got the sensors, but none of those boost his hit points and he's not at range. He's well within range of these T2 point defences. He's been pung and it seems like Hot Team agree he might be worth the pickup. Saints keeps doing his duty, firing on the enemy units and then the point defences. But there's a Whaler gunship coming in from Joker, a Whaler Tech 3 gunship, and those T1 Inties aren't going to pick it up in time. It's easily got the hit points to absorb the fire, and boom! Nya Marine goes down. I think Saints is going to be forced to fall back here as the explosion clears. ASF comes in from Starchasm before um, it gets picked off by the ASFs from Johansas, and when it does take out that way the gunship, but Star on half health. Two vets will help, but will it help enough as we have two Vothus, the T2 and a half extra boosted T2 Seraphim gunships, the Vothus, and another way that comes out. Is Saints actually going to make it out in one piece? I think he is. 
as he brings in a lot of flak to support. So let's see how Star's doing. Well, Star is down here. He's recolonized most of this area. And Sailor has been pressured a little bit by some pillars, but Sailor has also got T2 gunships, so lots of air control from the north, and I think he'll be able to push these fellows right back. However, look at this eco damage, look at this desert of mexes, and from being a hundred behind, Cold Team are now only 25 eco, 20 eco behind the hot team. And so that is a big win that they needed. Still, they haven't caught up, and that mass lead, in terms of total mass collected, will take quite the disparity the other way for Cold Team to remedy. Joker tries a cheeky whaler on Star, but that's probably going to get shot down quite quickly. And in come a wave of ASFs, which are going to deal with that, no problems. And Saints has sacrificed his region over to go for T2. Is he planning to just go full firebase here? and set up a little point defense creep. No, he's going for the TML. So that could be fun. We have quite a cheeky T1 raid from Sailor here. It's got a decent amount of T1 AA in it, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to stop even a few gunships and if Saints, for example, were to take these two Ilshis up here and just send them down there. Can you tell I'm enjoying drawing with the art tool? Look at me, Procaster. Anyway, this raid from Sailor is coming in and we've got a few T1 tanks coming up from Star, but nothing really enough to stop it. So I think he's going to lose a couple of mexes and a radar up here. Meanwhile, Star as well is going for tactical missile, so double tactical missile play from the code team. And we are seeing tactical missiles coming out from Saints. And what's it going to claim? Boom! There goes the T3 air HQ for Joker, which is a huge pickup. A T2 mech capped. And look, he's just he's just going at it. This is brutal. Another T2 mix, partially capped. And the, the, look how quickly he's loading. These are just coming out one after the other. No mercy. Another capped T2 mix. A hit on Joker, but Joker has unfortunately just finished his upgrade, so um, Saints doesn't force a cancel, and Joker immediately starts moving. Saints will no doubt see that. He doesn't actually, but he's deduced that it didn't do anything, and he has just shot off another one, taking out another T2 Max. This one, though, uncapped, and he keeps on firing, just shooting over this. He and there are more T2 Maxes. This is brutal. How many have he taken out now? One, two, three, four, five, six. That one got shot down by this TMD. But he just keeps on firing, and now he's targeting up here. All the way back here, boom, seven. And is this going to be number eight? It is. I can't stop watching. Number nine? Yes. 
and now these gunships from Star are coming out to join in the fun and the eco damage is brutal. It looked like Johannes and Sailor particularly had been focusing on their eco for a bit. I mean Sailor still got over 200 despite those losses. But Saints is just unstoppable as he keeps on popping out TML after TML and Joker with gun and nano and stealth is coming in to stop him and he opens up as Saints' barrage just continues boom picking off yet another he must have taken out like 15 mixes with that and though he hasn't got the nano anymore he's got gun still and he's got Ilshis coming in in support and he's got this T2 point defense and Joker is just going to die and Saints is going to be fine sure there's a way they're coming in here but Saints can just drop back under here and that's a huge amount of flak from Star and Joker dies boom that is brutal So, Star, having inherited Nyar's gunships, is continuing to do sterling work while the TMLs continue to fly out and help out. And look at the 17,000 mass killed by Vets on Saints, and like 90% of that is from his TML, which is beautiful. And we now have a Continental Transport carrying Star to come forward and join in the fun. I say come forward, but it looks like he's actually just going to this little pond here. So what's he planning to do with his TML? I like this. Edgebuilt PDs have been reducing the hot team's work on the North Plateau. I didn't even see what killed these ones up here, but it looks like Yohanzas is rebuilt. Oh, it must have been those gunships doing their rounds. Anyway, Yohanzas is now rebuilding them. And again, we have a push from Saints with the com. And look at this, we now have the eco lead for Cold Team after that staggering amount of eco damage. And the TML from Saints was the primary cause of most of that eco damage and it's also going to force a lot of TMD to go up from Hot Team if, in my opinion, they have any sense. Sailor points out the ACU and he's pointing out Star hiding in that pond there. Star does have T T3 which will enable him to load his TML very quickly. I will also protect him from some damage by giving him more hit points but a concerted snipe might just do for him. Down here we have a continental drop of riptides onto the plateau but there's a lot of further artillery pieces in defence. Riptides and anti andam gunships but the anti-air is tearing the gunships apart, the riptides are being shredded by the furthers there's PDs here, and while I do like to see a good drop, that drop isn't really going to get anything done. Mind you, look at this. This must have been some gunship work from Star, which will have helped them get their eco lead. Not a vast amount of traction for Cold Team here, though. Lots of PDs have held it back. These mobile missile launches could help with that. But we're also seeing Harbies out from Sailor, while... Saints appears to be relying more on T2 and we have got Star coming forward here while Saints sends a bunch of NGs across. Is he just planning to set up a base here? No, he's just seen there's a lot of tasty reclaim there and he's on his way to reclaim it. So the game appears to have entered a bit of a lull, and where in the early game we were saying, oh look at Hot Team's massive eco lead and massive map control, well, they've still got the plateaus, but in terms of the center, I think that we have to award map control overall to Cold Team, and the eco, well, 
it's now Cole team who are nearly 100 ahead, so that's a massive comeback. We see another um, TML zooming out from Saints. But now, look at the speed at which these TMLs are coming out thanks to the T3 build power on Star. He is just lobbing them out and he has got a shield to break through. And a TMD there as well. And it looks like he's decided that it isn't worth the effort and he hasn't broken through that shield. Because several shields, are, even the T2 ones, are pretty tough. Meanwhile, we have bricks walking around here, and sniper bots are a good counter to bricks if the bricks don't get in range. But, unfortunately for Saints, the bricks have got in range thanks to this stealth field. And so the snipers are quickly eaten by the chunky bricks. And what do Hot Team have to answer all this? Can they get engineers out into this area of reclaim? It looks like Johannes is just trying to rebuild the mexes, and I don't like that. I think he should know there'll be opposition coming in here, and I think that he should be just focusing on grabbing this reclaim fast in order to attack up what he's got, rather than too much focus on the re-expansion, like cap these mexes, rebuild this mex, which he is at T3, tech them up, and use the eco you will hear the reclaim to do it. Meanwhile, we have quite a significant raid from Sailor coming across the southern pond with these Aurora tanks and a few and he has a few mobile shields to back it up. Don't know why this isn't pushing as well to join in. I think this should come up and join in. Meanwhile, awful lot of point defences just in lines, T1 point defences for Star, but he hasn't got any up here, and these tanks are just going to run straight past them, so that could be pretty nice for Sailor if you can just make it connect here without even scraping these point defences. However, I'm not seeing any flak in there. He, he did bring the army down from the top to help out, but did it actually have any flak? No, it's just got T1 anti-air. So, it looks like, will he see it? He's going to lose bird power, he's going to lose a, probably this mech, maybe this mech. He's got a strat, but that seems, oh, in fact it's the strat that kills his mechs. And this T2 point defense will deal with that. Is he going to lose another mech? Maybe. The strat seems overkill against an army that's mostly T1, and this broadsword is a much better answer to it. It will eat the AA quickly and then be able to move on to the T1 tanks, no questions asked. And we can see here that Sailor has a T3 army coming in, but that's a problem that Star will have to face another day, and if he does so, I expect he'll be facing it with these. He has restorers and he has broadswords, a potent force, and he didn't actually lose this mech. He came close to it, but he kept it. Eco's remarkably close, only 60 in it when they're over 800 per team now, so um, it's beginning to balance out. And that's mainly due to Sailor's immense focus on Eco. We actually just saw him getting the Raz completed on his com. And he's got a lot of T3 mexes. Has he got a quantum gateway yet? I don't see one. But that'll probably be a port of call we're going to see from him fairly soon. We have one cheeky brick raiding around up here. Is it going to get anything done? There is a point defence here, but the point defence will take quite some time to, walk, to work its way through one brick, and the brick might kill it first. But this has stealth on it. And that said, though, Hot Team do see it. I'm assuming they have Omni somewhere. Oh, look at Saints being... Hor well, he was horrifically power storage for a second there. But Star is going to be providing more than enough power. And the land push comes in, but where's its AA support? 
Where is it going to stop this huge horde of broadswords and of restorers? Has he got anything that can stop it? And nice kiting from these sniper bots. This shielded base has some point defense in it. I feel that Saints is going to lose a couple of mexes, but those restorers are going to do the job and those broadswords, as are these snipers, they're just going to clean this up before any more damage gets done. So not a huge hit to Cold Team's economy. And down it goes. Meanwhile, that brick did manage to get one of those mexes under PD, but then it was cleaned up by this PD firing down from the clifftop, which is nice. What have we got now? Well, I'll tell you what I saw a notification for. I saw that Saints has a nuke. Not just one nuke, he has two nukes. So, where we saw him going for tactical missile shenanigans, now he is going for strategic missile shenanigans. Are there any SMDs in Hot Team's base? I don't see any. Furthermore, do they know about either of those nukes? I will tell you, my friends, they do not. They have not a clue that there are two nukes going up here, and that could be because there's a stealth field here from Saints, so they haven't had any reason to scout it. We all say that at high level, Continuous scouting is important, but when the enemy has air control, which I'm pretty sure, thanks to all these restorers plus his ASFs, that Star does, and now he is coming in here and he is getting some real damage done on this outpost belonging to Sailor. And Johannes isn't taking the fight, he knows that he would just lose it, and it, hopefully for Sailor he will be putting up some SAMs in his base. Is he though? He's putting up a GC, but I tell you what, a GC doesn't have any of. The answer is anti-air. And so, if that air force were to go for the GC, it could hurt. That GC is nearly finished, and there's... No long, there are a decent number of sniper bots, but can they defend it from the air? I'm seeing a few T3 AA tanks in the mix there, which might help, but I don't know if they've got enough to defend the GC from all of these broadswords and restorers that Starchasm has produced. But it's my feeling that the whole question of what the GC does might be about to be rendered moot. Because I think that... Yes, look at that. This nuke is almost loaded. Come on. We gotta get it. There we go. Strategic launch detected. The nuke is fired. It's going straight for Johannes' air grid. Johannes runs to the water. It'll be a big loss, but Hot Team are actually ahead in eco by a tiny bit again, and I don't think they're down and out when this nuke hits. But they will be when that one hits. That's going for Sailor's base. Two nukes, one for each base, no SMD, Sailor and Johannes resign, Code Team win. What a game, and what a comeback, after Hot Team had such an eco lead and a map control lead for the majority of the early game. Suddenly, with that beautiful wave of tactical missiles from both Saints and from Star, it was all in the hands of the Code Team, and they fought their way back slowly until they sealed the deal with those nukes. So, overall, it was Missiles that won the day. Tell me what you thought in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.